Kia ora koutou, uh, Sandra Gray, uh, the National Secretary of Tahutu Karangi, the TEU, uh, with some of the branch presidents from the university sector. Um, we're here because it's been one hell of a year for the TEU. It's been a huge year for all of you involved in the university negotiations. Um, and yeah, it really has been a whole year team. Uh, our work for the 2022 negotiations began in February last year in a room not dissimilar to this. Um, and it peaked with eight university teams taking strike action on October 6, 2022. And we are now just moving into settling the last of the collective agreements and signing them. It's been a year of highs and lows, napiki nahiki, around pay and conditions in the university sector. One of the real lows for us had to have been uh, when we were at conference together in May last year and the government budget announced that the government was only going to put 2.75% extra into the tertiary education budget when inflation for the nation was running at around 7%. You can't get decent pay rises uh, without money in the coffers. So we're hoping that our new minister, Jan Tanetti, can get inflation proofing built into the tertiary education sector. But there were some amazing highs. The energy of over 7,000 university members taking strike action together was certainly one of those. But it isn't over. We need to keep standing together. Uh, we need to keep standing together across all eight universities to ensure that staff get a real pay rise and that universities are good places to work. And that's what I want to speak to you about today is our research into just how staff are feeling about pay in the sector. Uh, I want to present a very brief summary of work that has ca been carried out by Charles Sedgwick and Elisa DeWall, who are researchers responsible for the 2022 State of the Sector surveys. Um, they are over the other side of the world, hence my presenting their work, but they have worked tirelessly to put together a number of major reports for us that we are starting to release today. They've analysed responses from over 3,000 tertiary education staff and looked at everything from pay to workloads to management trends to the voice of the members of this union and the voice of the sector. And we have reports coming around from all the other parts, including the other large state sector space of Te Pukinga and the Wānangas. But today, it's university pay. So this short report is based on responses from 1,155 general and professional staff in universities and 1,470 academic staff who work in universities. And what does it show? Well, it shows that pay in universities is not experienced as a genuine, honest and transparent way to recognise the important skills, dedication and care that university staff provide. Rather, respondents to the State of the Sector survey said very clearly that they see the pay systems as a grudging compensation in a system driven by distrust of staff. And that pay rates are not sufficient to cover the hours of work or what staff do. Half of the university academic respondents to the survey said they were very dissatisfied or dissatisfied with their pay rates, stating they do not reflect the hours they work. And 55% of those uh, academic respondents said the pay doesn't even reflect the type of work they do. The situation is similar for general and professional staff respondents. 40% of the professional general and allied staff respondents indicated that their pay rates did not reflect the number of hours they worked. And 57% were really dissatisfied, very dissatisfied or dissatisfied with the pay um, in terms of reflecting the type of work that they carry out. Why this dissatisfaction? Well, here's two quotes that kind of give you an idea of what members or what respondents were concerned about. It's taken me seven years to get back to the lowest salary earned whilst I was working in the manufacturing sector. Why are we not being valued considering the current employment landscape? Another said, the salaries are too low compared with other sectors. Um, career progression is too slow and full of obstacles. It seems that university exploits the nature of the work and the workers, in which changing jobs is actually quite uncommon in the in the university sector. So the bo bosses just say, well, 
there's no need to compete if most of our employees aren't going to jump ship. None of this will be of surprise to those of you in this room today as leaders of the TEU. And actually, it's not going to be a surprise to all of those people who sat on negotiating teams, went out on rallies, pickets and took strike action. But there is more to the problem of pay than just the amount and whether it affects the hours of work or the type of work you do. The respondents noted that they work in a flawed system in universities, internally fragmented, persistently demanding, distrustful of them and controlled by a disconnected management. The system is flawed because workloads are multiplied with arbitrary non-core functions, according to the respondents, and constantly changing demands. The system is flawed because senior management are disconnected from their realities facing those who feel underpaid and undervalued in universities. As one respondent said, the autocratic leadership and the lack of real democracy leads to disengagement and reduced morale. Millions are spent on buildings, marketing and corporate leadership, while the shop floor staff who deliver the actual goods of the university are doing more for less. So those comments again will feel quite familiar and we have discussed in our meetings. This flawed system is having a personal impact on staff who feel undervalued, bullied, ignored, dismissed or punished. One respondent said, I have the feeling that everything I do is totally useless. I'm just ticking boxes and accomplishing nothing useful. Another noted, there is uh, no reward structure at all. There is just punishment for not performing well and the performance expectations change constantly. Yet another respondent to the survey said, I'm constantly being told off for politely voicing my frustrations over workload um, distributions and the lack of training. So the survey respondents were not expressing unhappiness with their job in the survey, by the way, but with their institutional and the institution's responses to pay, stress, overwork, appointment and promotions processes. Respondents received offhand comments from managers that make them reluctant to even talk about pay. One respondent said, we have met, we've been met with statements like, I'll just be glad that you have a job when we raise how stressed we are feeling. University staff carry out the core work of the institutions in what many see as a very destructive context. One respondent wrote this, because we are a workforce who genuinely cares about what we are delivering, the research and the teaching, we continue patching up the holes to keep everything running while the university management continues to take away any perks of the job and tell us we're just lucky to get paid and be employed. Another said, I feel completely powerless to even express how my life is impacted by my working conditions. Better to grin and bear it than find oneself on the wrong side of management. Both academic and professional and general staff respondents to the survey made it very clear that the issue of pay cannot be separated from the conditions of work, the conditions under which they labour. The discontent around pay goes even deeper than the salaries on offer. It goes to the very heart of the way that universities are now run. A process that makes staff a liability evaluated on cost benefit scales, disciplined by tools of pay and promotion, reviews and restructuring and constantly feeling undervalued, ignored and abused. As one respondent noted, we are constantly being asked to do more with less without recognition or reward. People do it because they are passionate and committed to the students, to their communities, and they do it at great personal cost sometimes. This is not sustainable. So what do we do about it? That is the question. What do we as TEU do about it? It is clear that standing together through 2022 meant that we got better pay rises than were first offered and that for some, there were increases over two years of around 12% on their wages. And that's significant, but clearly from the research, more is needed. To, um, to get more, what do we need to do? Well, we are going to have to link arms once more. We are going to have to stand together once more and call out both the university management for how they spend the funding, 
but also the government on what they deliver to the university system. It is time to address this crushing system of punishment and rebukes to ensure that funding to universities allows for real pay rises and promotions. After all, staff conditions of work are students' conditions of learning. Thank you.